Today we're here to learn about the Renewa Medical Brain Health Evaluator System. We'll go through the setup, the contents of the case, and a patient demonstration. The kit comes complete in a carry case. Very portable. All the items you need for doing a test are on the top, including a laptop computer, which is housed underneath in the case. The case contains, from left to right, standard FDA approved EEG cap with 19 channels and a connector ribbon. The cap, which has 19 EEG leads, also has three alternate leads, a left ear, a right ear, and an electrocardiogram, which is placed on the chest. coming with two sizes, a medium and a large. Other sizes are available and we'd recommend having a couple of extra caps on hand. The amplifier is a small Bluetooth enabled amplifier. It has the 19 channel pin connector, charging area and the on off switch. Blue flashing light indicates that the amplifier is on but not paired with the system. It comes with Earbuds for the auditory task. Comes with a charging cable and a USB compatible. And the charging kit also comes with international adapters, which are easily interchanged. It has the patient response button, which is used during the test by the patient for responding to the stimulus. It has the gel that's required to be put inside the sensors for the cap, a prep gel for prepping the ears for a better signal, and it comes with the components for applying the gel to the patient. Included in here is a syringe and a blunt tip needle. The blunt tip needles are single use, one per patient. The computer itself comes fully loaded with the software for collecting the data and the, da the computer automatically loads the software when it's turned on. That's the entire system and we'll go through a use case scenario momentarily. So what we're going to do now is measure the head to have the right cap size which is very important so the 10-20 locations are in the right location on the scalp going to prepare the skin with taking the oils off, the alcohol preps on the earlobes and the forehead. We'll be using the new prep to lightly abrade the earlobes and that helps to get a better connection on the ear with the sensors. We'll be using a hypoallergenic FDA approved gel to fill the syringe. and we'd be using a blunt tip needle. It's very important to show the patient that in fact it is a blunt tip. When you come to the side of their head that they are not getting an injection, you explain this is just to put gel into these holes in the cap. Use about four to five cc's of gel. Okay, so we'll go ahead and measure for the right cap size. You start about an inch above the eyebrows, follow cap around and eyes uh, 58 and a half centimeters. And then you take the cap and check on the inside tag, it tells you the centimeter range, and this is 58 to 62. It's a perfect size for this person. Take an alcohol prep pad, pair the earlobes, and the forehead, taking some of the oils off. And incidentally, the hair should be washed with shampoo, with no conditioner, and no gel. 
Use a little new prep on the earlobes, just a tiny amount on the fingertips to abrade the earlobe. There is a front and a back to the cap. The tag goes to the back. You can put the wires for the ear clips in the ECG sensor also in the back when you apply the cap. And you'll see that there's front two, this is location FP1, location FP2 over the frontal poles, line up at the center of the eyes and the midline sensors go right down the middle. you have the ear clip for the right ear and an ear clip for the left ear and an ECG sensor. You'll put gel in the well of each of these sensors and for the ECG sensor a small piece of tape to hold it just above the clavicle in the soft tissue adjacent to the clavicle on the left side. It's also important to prepare the skin where you'll be placing this sensor next to the clavicle. And you could do so once again with an alcohol prep and or a little bit of new prep to help get a good connection. Ear clip again putting gel in the well, adhering it to the earlobe. The twenty five pin connector only goes in, in one direction. You'll line it up, and the on-off switch is on the side next to the connector. This is not the on-off switch. This is the indicator for the Bluetooth wireless, and when it's blinking, it is searching for a connection with the computer. You'll want to keep the amplifier in line of sight with the computer. You can also place the earbuds in at this time. In some cases you can allow this flap from the cap to hold the earbuds in place. There's also a patient response button and you put it in the dominant hand of the patient. If they're right-handed, it goes in the right hand, left-handed in the left. On a computer screen, we will press the create new patient button and type in the person's name, birth date, handedness, gender, symptoms as a self to add symptom information and medication or supplement information in the text boxes and press the continue button. And you see there are four tests on the screen under the assessment side, brain check, eyes open, eyes closed, evoke task for the evoke potentials is what that stands for and then press the Start Assessment button. And the instructions on the screen are for the patient to follow, or you as the technician can also follow those instructions. And then you'll see here will be 
showing the impedance or the connectivity of how well you have a connection between the scalp and the sensor. And it's only a small amount of gel that you put in about like that, just a little drop, squirt it into the hole, a small amount, like the, so, then put the needle, or blunt needle, against the skin, moving lightly, not pressing down, but just using the weight of the syringe back and forth to lightly abrade the skin, like so. And you go to the next one. It's very important to always have a good connection for the ground. And you'll see the ground on the screen. It says GND on the screen, as you can see. And work your way around to each location, adding a little gel, braiding slightly, press a little gel in, braid slightly, working through all the sensors. And after you've worked through all the sensors, putting gel in, it's good to intermittently come back and retouch up the connection at the ground. And once you have all green dots on the screen at each location, that tells you you have excellent connectivity or impedance to continue the test. These locations at the temple and the forehead are sensitive. Be very gentle with these locations. They're more sensitive than the others on the scalp. Okay, we show that we have a good connection at all points and you can press the button to go on to the next screen. And you'll see here on the screen good EEG and good ECG at the bottom. And this first screen is for you to test by blinking your eyes. So please blink your eyes three times. Notice the large wave that is shown on the top of the EEG when you blink your eyes. Try to stay, keep your jaw and face relaxed. Okay, go on to the next screen. This is where you'll clench your teeth three times, again, following the instructions on the screen. Notice the significant fast wave EEG, that's from an or EMG, that comes when you grit your teeth. So you want to try to avoid that during the test. Go on to the next screen. And this shows the three parts of the test eyes open, eyes closed, and the reaction time. You may continue by pressing the button. And first you'll start with your eyes open, relaxing. So you'll pick a spot, not high, just at a neutral, relaxed, downward position so that you're not looking up and causing the muscles in your frontalis to contract. Look somewhat down, pick a spot and stare at it. Not looking left or right, up or down, but look straight ahead. Okay. Go ahead and press the button. And on the screen, it will show you how much time is remaining. It's important as, if, as a technician to be outside of their field of view and have the patient focused away from a lot of activity, say against or towards a wall or something, so there's not a lot of visual distractions. Okay, press the button, you're done with the eyes open test and this will be the eyes closed portion. So go ahead and press the button when you're ready to begin. Again following the instructions on the screen. You'll hear two beeps when it's time to open your eyes. Okay very good. The last part, the evoke potential portion, you'll follow the instructions when you see the large circle you will press the button as quickly as you can. Only for the large circle when you see it like that. Go on to the next screen. When you see this small circle you're going to ignore it. When you see this checkerboard, you're going to ignore it. When you hear that noise, 
through your earbuds, the white noise stimulus, you're going to ignore it. And it is quite loud, it's about 85 decibels. All right, this will be a practice test. You will press the button whenever you see the large circle. Good. Okay, excellent, good job. Now you passed, it shows your passing score. If you did not pass, you did not get enough of those correct, you'd have a chance to redo it. All right, so now it's the test time. You will not see the check mark or the X if you get it right or wrong. It'll just continue for 10 minutes. So do your best, try to get all the large circles correct whenever you see a large circle. Press the button as quickly as possible, and you may begin. Okay, good, you're done. Good job. And I said in the instructions show now how to take everything off just like it was put on. Now you take the ear clips off, you take the patch off, earbuds, and the cap. Okay, it's important that you wash the cap in between uses and let it dry thoroughly. The way you wash the cap comes with a little cleaning instrument. You'll run it under water, cleaning the hole with the wooden instrument that comes in the kit, and then letting it dry. Periodically, you'll use ivory soap, no other type of soap, to wash the cap entirely and let it dry. And those are all the standard cleaning me measures that uh, FDA approved. Uh, for the use for this cap. At this point, the data is being transmitted from the computer. You must have a good internet connection and it's sending to a HIPAA compliant server where that data is being processed and will be available through the portal login uh, where you'll be able to pull the PDF of the report to download to electronic medical records or to print. At the conclusion of the test, the data streams in an encrypted manner to a HIPAA compliant server where the information is processed with complex algorithms using the same algorithms that have been published in the literature for these statistics. What's unique about this report this is it's multimodal. We're getting 19 channels of EEG which will quantify against the peak performance database We'll be getting a three lead ECG and pulling heart rate variability statistics and other cardiac statistics from that. There's a neuropsychological screening test and there's event related potentials. The importance of getting all these simultaneously is we're recording both the autonomic nervous system and we're also getting the central nervous system information. The test only takes 20 minutes total of data collection time. An output looks something like this report here, where you have the first two pages are a summary of the, the measures and the scores. After those initial summary pages, you'll see that same information displayed graphically. Right here you have six categories of brain function. This is the subjective portion of the test. Memory, in particular, is broken into the six types of memory. These are the behavioral measures, reaction time, reaction time variance, and an omission commission error. Those of you who use a TOVO or an IVA test, these are the measures that come from those tests. The heart rate variability statistics are shown here. Here's a sample of the ECG. This is a depiction of the heart rate variability. This is an FFT shown in the bottom right, and these statistics here are heart rate, QTC interval, SDNN, which is the measure of heart rate variability. These are visual processing or visual evoke potential, auditory evoke potential, 
the P300A and the P300B. It's very important when you're looking at P300 to look at both the A and the B because they are different functions. In particular, the P3B has a lot of press and a lot of literature as it's a measure for early onset of Alzheimer's and other memory conditions and is published widely. You'll see a sample of the EEG, the morphology, and the quantification of that EEG shown in head maps, eyes open and eyes closed. And Loretta, source localization of the deviant EEG, where is the source generator of that EEG within the sphere of the brain? And it's done again in eyes open and eyes closed. To understand the measures within this test, there's a clinician's manual. It's not a long manual, but it's quite dense. And you'll see here that in the clinician's manual, all the measures from that report are all listed. It's categorized so that you can quickly find the measure, what the measure means, what the clinical correlations are with that measure, and potential treatment interventions for your consideration. Renewa Medical has put this system together and gives a lifetime guarantee. They've made it cost-effective and they've made it complete.